Welcome to the channel. We're going to retouch the skin today and we're gonna um, now do the frequency separation. This is a great technique because when we retouch the skin, we want to make the colors and the textures and the tones, we want to make the tones fuse together smoothly, like if she was wearing a perfect makeup. But we don't want to lose the texture of the skin, the pores. Many people retouch the skin by blurring it in different ways and while you do this you are actually having a nice smooth skin but at the same time you're having a, a, a skin that looks not realistic so today we're going to retouch it with frequency separation what frequency separation does is that it takes the textures of the skin and put it in a separate layer and takes the tones of the skin and put it in another separate layer so you can work on the tones of the skin blurring and mixing together without affecting the texture on the layer above. So we're gonna learn this um, a skill and pay attention because it can be a little confusing sometimes. We're gonna start by duplicating our layer. So we already clean and prepare the skin from zero and now we're going to duplicate it. So we're gonna go hit Control J or Command J and on this upper layer, we're gonna go to Filter Blur, Gaussian Blur, we're going to blur. Now, if we start from radius zero and we start climbing up, you're going to see how the portrait blurs. You want to blur the portrait until the person is still recognizable, like you can still tell that is a person and you can still recognize the person in the portrait. So this is going to vary. For my um, photos I have to use in this case in this specific portrait 14.8 I'm gonna leave the um, a link to the original file so you can actually edit it so for my portrait for the files that comes from my camera I have to um, use a radius of 14.8 depending on the camera that you're using depending on the framing of the portrait if it's a close-up or a full body you're gonna have to use less or more uh, radius on your photos. So the key to know how much effect to apply, you need to like make sure that the skin is perfectly and you have no texture on the skin but in the overall photo you can still tell that it's a person, you can still kind of recognize the person in the, in the photo. So once that is like this you can just hit OK. By the way um, in the description you're gonna find a link to this raw file so you can work on it and you can um, edit this from zero and find um, the perfect tune which is what I know you can just follow these steps all right now that we have this um, blur applied you're gonna rename this um, layer so double click here and you can just name it tones now you're gonna click and drag down under this other layer and this layer we're gonna name it texture okay so we're gonna go now to image up here to apply image and on layer you're gonna switch it to tones on blending mode you're gonna usually starts in multiply you're gonna drag it down to subtract and down here in a scale you're gonna put number two and offset 128 by default, Photoshop comes with different settings, de settings there and also in um, the blending mode it's going to come by multiply. You're going to switch blending mode to subtract and you're going to switch a scale to 2 and offset to 128 and you're going to keep this forever. You don't have to do it every time. Every time you open Photoshop, once you change this, you don't have to change it anymore. The only thing that you're going to have to change every time you reopen Photoshop is the blending mode. That is always going to be by default on multiply. You're going to change it to subtract and that's it. Now you hit OK and down here on texture in the blending mode in the, in the layer you're going to go down all the way to linear light. When you get to linear light now we have the tone split and let me show you. If I turn off texture I end up with just the tones layer. If I turn off the tones, I end up only with the texture layer. So now I have my frequency separation complete. Now I can work on the tones layer. So you're gonna click and select the tones layer 
you're gonna get really close to the portrait you're gonna select your lasso tool and you're gonna make a rough selection of an area okay if you have any selection uh, tool and you want to see what you're doing you need to check first what is the the, um, the radius of the blur or the featherness in the selection so to do this if you go up here in Photoshop you're gonna see this is feather this is 39.5 let's just go down to zero um, so I can show you what this is so I'm, I'm gonna make a selection in zero and to know what I, what I selected, I'm going to hit the, 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 key, the cue in your keyboard and you're going to see the selection is really rough, alright? It's really, really rough. So to unselect this, you're going to hit Q again. You're going to go to your lasso tool, click anywhere to deselect it. Change the feather, let's go up to 20, roughly 20. Select again, hit the Q, and you see now how the edge is feathered. It's like kind of blurry. So our goal is to have a selection and to have a blurry edge so we can mix the colors in the selections that we're doing. So again, depending on the photo that you're using, you're gonna have to do this um, with more pixels or less pixels, all right? So let's just hit the Q again. Let's deselect this, let's change feather, let's go to 40, 42, select, hit Q, and this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for um, a selection that looks like a spotlight that spreads, all right? Once that I have this selection, I'm going to start my blendings. All right, so to start with the frequency separation editing, you're gonna go like this. You're gonna um, select an area, Let's say we're gonna split the forehead in three parts. First part is the, we can say the left. You're gonna go from the left to almost the middle of the forehead and then around the eyebrow without touching the eyebrow, eyebrow sorry, without touching the eyebrow and without touching the hair. Once you have this selection, you can even hit Q and see what you're, what you're selecting. Uh, see this, that it's not touching the hair, it's not touching the eyebrow, all right? Then you're gonna go to filter blur gaussian blur and you're going to change this setting until you feel like the colors are mixing now pay a lot of attention here a big mistake that people do is that they over blur so what is over blurring if i just keep blurring you're gonna see how the selection gets darker around the edges and this is because now my blurriness is taking color from the hair and it's taking color from the eyebrow and it's taking color from surroundings and it's making it weird. Plus, this is gonna mix the tones. So if you mix the tones too much, you're also gonna mix the highlights to the mid, uh, middle and low lights in the skin and it's gonna make it flat. A skin that has no highlights and no mid tones and no shadows and it's all mixed up, it's just a flat image. And we don't wanna flatten this image, we wanna make it three-dimensional, we're gonna make it having nice highlights, and nice low lights and middle tones. So we're gonna be careful on this and do not overdo it, please, because this is what many people fail. All right, so we're gonna go down to zero. We're gonna climb up until we see that the colors are mixing. My goal is not to get to this. When it just starts getting dark in there, I'm going back down, all right? Let's leave this one out around 13.4, all right? hit OK, let's continue. Now we're gonna select from the middle of the forehead, overlapping our first selection, going around, and then like that, okay? Sorry. Sorry, let's do it again, right? Gonna go around like this. Okay, you can see what I selected. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. I'm gonna use the same settings that I used in the last selection, which is 13.4 in this case. Hit OK. Now you're gonna select the last third of the forehead. Be careful, don't hit the, the eyebrow. Blur, Gaussian blur, same settings, hit OK. Zoom out. Now we're gonna select the cheeks. You're gonna go like this, around the eye, around the nose, right around there. 
and we're gonna hit blur, Gaussian blur, same thing, we're gonna select over here, this is gonna help you mix the colors, and it's gonna give it a beautiful, beautiful makeup look, nice makeup. All right, sometimes you have to climb up more, like 36 in this case. We're gonna select the chin. Make sure not to touch the lips or, in this case, the hand. Blur, Gaussian blur. Hit OK, perfect. Now we're gonna select the areas in between and overlapping, remember, just like we did in the forehead. We're gonna select like that. Gaussian blur, same thing. Over here, overlapping. This is gonna help you mix the colors better. All right, we get it right there. Hit OK. Some people even retouch this area around the lips. So let's do it. I don't think it needs it right now, but let's just do it. Be gentle with it. All right, also here. Selecting, we got it. Now we're gonna go with the nose. This is also tricky. The nose you're gonna select from the forehead, around the nose, invading a little bit the cheek and the rest of the fore of the nose, trying not to touch the eyes, okay? Once that you have selected the nose, if you apply the same amount of calcium blur that you've been applying to the rest of the skin, you're gonna lose a lot of shadows and, and texture in the, in the nose and it's gonna make it look flat. So, I always apply less, at least the half of the radius of the blur effect to the nose than I do to the rest of the skin. So I'm just gonna go like, say 4.2, 4.7, hit okay. Now I zoom out, okay. We're gonna retouch the arm. Now I'm supposed to do it by sections. I'm just gonna be a little general on this so we can save some time and I can show you more in this video. So, okay, we're gonna just select the arms roughly like this. Just taking your time. Selecting over here as well. Mm. Very simple. Right. I'm doing this fast because it's a tutorial and I don't wanna take too much of your time, but when you're doing this with your portraits, you're gonna want to take a lot of time to do this and go little by little, so you get a really nice effect in a natural look of the skin. You don't want to overdo this once again. You don't want to over blur it or over um, mix it because it's gonna lose the natural look. So now I'm going to fuse these two layers by uh, selecting texture, Control E or Command E, and it's now mixed to tones. So let me just show you the effect before and after. Okay, this is the before and this is the after. Now we have learned what is the frequency separation. I hope that you liked it, uh, this technique of frequency separation. It's really usable. I know it's a little confusing. It's a little, little confusing at the beginning, but by practicing, you make it so natural, so automatic, and every time you get better and better at doing this. Um, I highly recommend one more time, take your time when you're doing this, uh, don't abuse of the filter, do not overdo it because you want to keep a natural looking skin and you want your model to look like she has a perfect skin without being too much retouch. Um, now the last step of retouching the skin is going to be the touch and burn, so follow us on the next video. Remember if you liked this video don't forget to give me a nice like. Uh, so subscribe if you haven't done it before. If you, if this is your first time in the channel, I recommend that you see the part one and part two of this skin retouching and uh, just follow along this editing of my portrait. Remember the file is going to be down here if you want to download it so you can work on it and follow the same steps. See you in the next video.